Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, built just for you, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM and the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. We're where you live your life. We're where you run your business. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. Running a business is a lot like climbing a mountain, which is why I think you can learn so much from Paula and Margaret Quinamowen. The professors in our master class today started their business because they couldn't afford the clothes they needed to stay warm while trekking the highest places of the world. Learn from these veterans how to start, run, and grow a company. Step into our master class. Cold Mountain is full of weird sights. People who try to climb it always get scared. At a touch of rain, the whole mountain shimmers. But only in good weather can you make the climb. Sixth century Chinese poet Han Shan, whose name means Cold Mountain, serves as a spiritual mentor to the founders of Jagged Edge Mountain Gear. They make clothing for mountain sport enthusiasts. This is our mountain vest. Mm -hmm. We set the zippers in a way that you won't have any raw edges to rub against your face. Oh yeah, it's very nice. These are great. These become our uniform of life because you can wear them anywhere. To find Jagged Edge, we drove to the end of the road, Telluride, Colorado, which sits at the base of one cold mountain. Margaret and Paula Quinamowen are twins who separately fell in love with cold mountains. Together, they are building a business, as so many of us have, on dreams. Well, I moved to Climber's Paradise here in Telluride, Colorado, and I needed outerwear. And so I started sketching up ideas of things I wanted to make. Wait a minute, are you saying in this beautiful place that has thousands of tourists every day walking through, you couldn't find anything to wear? I couldn't afford anything to wear. It's a very expensive town, and outerwear is tremendously expensive. And so I, through drawing up my ideas, part of my idea was to make headbands. Show us how they look on. OK. There's a lot of different ways they can be worn. They can be worn high, or they can be pulled down over the ear. The beauty of a headband is it can cure a bad hair day. <laughs> You're so much warmer with a headband on. It's a fashion piece, and if you have a ponytail or long hair, it keeps your hair out of your eyes. I didn't have oil in my crankcase. I was out of gas. I was torn between the oil and the gas and food. And so I sewed up 13 headbands, and I took them into a restaurant and thought, well, here goes. And I asked if anyone would like to buy a headband. And it was really fortunate that all 13 of them sold. So then I had $130, and I realized I could make money doing this, and that was my start. I wanted to create something. I never knew this was going to be, become a business. It's funny because I, I almost feel like there's a destiny in it, in it. I had made statements, someday maybe I'll have a full line. Maybe someday I'll have a store. But I never really thought they were going to become reality. I spent five years in China and Tibet, and I spent a year and a half in a Chinese university learning Mandarin. Margaret and I 
we were both doing the sports outside. I was doing extreme solo long distance trekking in Asia. Margaret was climbing, but we couldn't afford the gear that we needed. The first time I walked into Everest Base Camp, the climbers were absolutely blown away. I was wearing a skirt and a Tibetan yak jacket. I didn't have a Gore-Tex jacket or a down jacket. And I just Were you freezing? Yes, but that was the nature of Margaret's and my existence. We were always cold. But we continued to do our sports and our dreams and adventures and excel regardless. For instance, Margaret was invited on a photo shoot with a very well-known professional climber. And in the climbing magazine shoots or shots, mm. she's been cropped from the pictures. Because after they did this approach that took two hours, the photographer looked at her and her outerwear and said, my God, is that duct tape keeping your pants together? <laughs> and the answer was yes. yes. And he was very angry. <laughs> When did you come back and the partnership began to develop? I would receive these desperate letters in Asia with Margaret telling me that she's started to sew these headbands and these vests and it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be as good as Eddie Bauer. Or she was trying to put across to me that this was not some rinky-dink thing. This was going to be first class from the beginning. So you were trying to sell Paula on coming back to help you, mm -hmm. subtly. It wasn't subtle. It was overt. <laughs> help. <laughs> Please. In the meantime, I was living in my car. and I want to understand decided, that you're living in your car. You're was, in Telluride and you're living in your car. It was still doing the poverty thing. You know, I just didn't have any money, <laughs> to be honest. Um, at this point, it was summer, and I couldn't sell the headbands in the summer because it was a winter market. There you go. That's the reason. OK, it makes I, sense now. You started with this, mm -hmm. the headband. What was the next item? And, what led to it? Did people ask, I want a matching mm -hmm. vest to go with my mm -hmm. headband? I was really trying to work out a vest. A store in Aspen said, if you make 12, if you make vests, we'll take 12 of them. So I had this goal. I was going to make a vest. And I wanted help with the vest because my version was just too homemade. And I called the different sewing plants in Salt Lake City. And everybody said, no, we have no interest. And I accidentally called one back, and the, the guy said, I already told you no, and you called me back again, and he was really annoyed, and he said, just hold a minute. So he put me on hold and came back, and he said, okay, I'll see you. And I went down to the sewing plant, and there was pictures of climbers all over in the lobby. I thought, wow, this is perfect. I belong here. So, so th they took you in and they made uh -huh. the 12 vests. Did you, did you make the 12 vests and sell them to the store? That we did, and we ended up selling hundreds and hundreds of them. I took it to, I took the vest and then some other pieces that we that I had added to the line with their help to a trade show, and it was a success. We had an $80,000 order from a Japanese customer, and it seemed it was just taking off. So you were really in, you were really interning. You were apprenticing. Mm -hmm. You were doing your homework. I was. We have a real Asian influence, as as Paula was saying, from from her background. This is a symbol of the Tao, and we're celebrating the experience and the path, the journey, the way versus the summit. And we've incorporated this into our hang tags, our garments, our um, point of purchase displays for other retailers that carry our, our goods. And it's been really powerful. People like the idea of a spiritual element into the clothing. We were looking for something to add some depth to our philosophy. We found that we were bored with the outerwear industry. Everything was extreme and emphasis on the summit. But it's the whole process that goes on inside your heart and your mind and the process of getting to the summit um, you might spend months getting to that final goal only to spend ten, mon ten minutes on top and maybe it's a raging storm and you don't get to see anything anyway or maybe you don't even make it to the summit so you've got to enjoy the journey. Alright, nice move. Thanks. 
All right, good job. The journey from selling headbands on the streets of Telluride in 1991 to manufacturing a full line of outerwear has taken Margaret and Paula tramping and trekking through the world of design, cutting, sewing, shipping, leasing, managing, and leading. Uh, no, that's basically what I do is from Eric Gilmore is new and has taken over the design work once done by Margaret. So are you a climber? Yep. Okay. Climber, biker, everything. Right. So do you fun. see yourself in these products when you're creating them? Yep. Okay. The down jacket itself stuffed in Of course, the employees yeah. are customers and often customers become employees. And uh, it'll fit great in your pack. And in some came in lines. on a Saturday to talk to me. <laughs> and Brad, you're the you're the brand new kid on the block in the organization, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So you're the rock climber. Any other rock climbers? Okay. All right. So and, and then who are the skiers? Okay. All right. I mean, we're all people that play in the mountains. So if 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 this wasn't in the mountains, I would have not. You know, if Jagged Edge wasn't here, then I wouldn't be working for Jagged Edge. It's a real teamwork. Real team. We're going to do this. We're going to accomplish this together. But it's our lifestyle. We are able to work in an, in an area that is also our passion. We love what we do and when we come to work we're not just coming to a job, we're coming to see our friends. Even, I would call us a family. We work well together, then we can go out, we can bike together, hike, climb. We, we go out at night, there's always somebody you can call. It's just, it's really a nice place to be. The people that we have working for us, we wouldn't probably find in other places. Um, a lot of us were drawn here originally by the environment, by the mountains around here, and Jagged Edge was kind of uh, a vehicle to let us stay here and enjoy these mountains. Uh, and that, you know, brings over into the business, it brings the people that really use the equipment into our, um, our, into our design room. How okay, we reversed like the zipper. <laughs> That's so when you're wearing a harness for the guys, we can right. still get to our zipper. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Saves you from taking everything off. Yeah. Did a customer tell you to do that? Uh, well, just climbers in general. Yeah, all right. A little fleece jacket. Right. Like Today, the jacket find their like products in over 150 they shops around the country, version. in their own three retail store locations, from this slick catalog, and at jaggededge.com. So, Paula, how are you using the Internet? Well, we use it every day to communicate with some companies. In the past, we did a mitten project production with China using the internet fully. We would communicate on the internet and it saved a terrific amount of expenses. Daoxin. Jagged Edge is already doing business globally, but they are positioned perfectly for expansion into Asia because of Paula's command of Mandarin and her understanding of the culture. That's me, Confucius White Lotus. Currently, they purchase trim from Asia and some garments are sewn in Taiwan. Doing business is easier now because of the internet, faxing, and global priority mail moves payments back and forth quickly. When no English translators are available to read documents sent through cyberspace, Paula writes by hand and uses fax and mail. I said thank you very much again for all the help you have given us. Jagged Edge is a tiny company compared to the Giants. Although Margaret and Paula continuously work to add features that are distinctive, outerwear products are more alike than different. What is distinctive about Jagged Edge is its mission. That mission is part of what the customer buys. Although the mission comes from an ancient tradition that Paula experienced personally during her five years in China, it seems unique in this industry dominated by symbols of accomplishment, achievement, and reaching the summit. Paula told me, our competition sells the summit. We sell the journey. Jagged Edge is teaching its customers how to think about life, and in the meantime, that same customer buys Jagged Edge outerwear to experience the journey. Jagged Edge has an excellent website. I like the fact that we see the pictures of Paula and Margaret and the key staff. You also see their story and mission statement. These are personal touches that bring the visitor closer. The internet is an intimate venue and to win customers, you must tell them and show them who you are. 
online at smallbusinessschool.org, you can study this company in more depth. The study guide encourages you to think about other lessons you can learn from Paula and Margaret. In their pursuit of investors, Margaret and Paula have written what they call the book, a detailed business plan. Every investor or bankers or the people that deal with this, it's their dream. It has everything about our company they need to know. I can hand it to a PR firm. I can hand it to somebody that's writing an article on us. Everything you need to know about Jagged Edge is in that business plan. Even new employees that come on board. My baby has Jagged Edge clothes. My husband has Jagged Edge clothes. I skied in my Jagged Edge bibs today. And, Trisha and Maxson is not the only their banker, she's their customer too. Because they were the typical business which had started in their garage and they'd financed their business through credit cards, uh, bank borrowing and stealing from family and relatives. Uh, they got some investors to come in and, and invest in the company, but they, they weren't loan sharks, but they you know were getting over 20% interest rate. Mm. And so they came in with this passioned plea for money in this amazing business plan of where they were going to go. I played with the numbers a bit and said if they could stop borrowing money on their credit cards at 18 percent to finance the business and and 20 percent and they actually cut their interest expense they could really actually start making some money and make a go of it and we put together this enormous package for the SBA and didn't really know where it was going to go but we worked really hard at it and they came back and they said, yeah, we'll do it. So uh, we made them the loan and they were just the hardest working girls and great people and like I said, a good reputation in town. So it was a lot of fun to work with them and it just, it, it grew from there. Every They were growing so fast, I think from, I was looking at the numbers this morning to refresh my memory, but their sales grew 50% the next year. So the lesson to others is? Uh, I would say the lesson to others is that financing a business on credit cards and 20% interest rates isn't the way to go because you spend all of your time trying to make enough money to pay back the debt service, kind of like our, our government does, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, right. and um, to come and talk to a banker and come in with a business plan and say, this is my vision and this is where I want to go. and and we have the experience and look what we're doing and look where we've come from making uh, headbands in their garage and uh, we can do it and it's just you know you gotta find a banker who says wow that's a really neat project and I believe in you. This business has been an exercise of jumping over one problem after another after another. After a while they don't even bother you anymore. You can sleep at night just fine because you're so used to the, the big problems. When we first started out, um, one day I recognized, hey, we don't have workman's comp and that's scary and we need to, to get everything on board. And within about the first year of the business, we made the decisions that no matter what it took, we never wanted to have some horrible thing put us out of business like having an employee fall off of a ladder and not have workman's comp in place or have a disgruntled employee come back and say, hey, you don't have unemployment insurance. Um, we couldn't afford that. So we do everything orthodox. We never break the rules. Another thing we initiated is we buy an accident policy for everybody that works here because as active as everybody is, I don't want anybody to not have any insurance. And we had a trademark issue. Oh, you did? Um, we knew about Jagged Edge Hollywood, who makes sequin denim jeans and lingerie. But we tried and tried to contact her. And we, we were unsuccessful. And we thought that she'd gone out of business. And one day, Jagged Edge Hollywood resurfaced. And it was a very serious blow to our business. We didn't know if we could keep our name. And that was quite a bit of legal action and negotiating. but. We've taken it out and come with an agreement. So you negotiated an agreement with her, mm -hmm. and you're paying her sort of a licensing fee yes. to use the name. Mm -hmm. It's perpetual. Do you ever do deals on a handshake? Do you ever, when you're dealing with the Chinese ordering things or your suppliers, or do you have contracts for everything? And 
I's dotted, T's crossed. In general, we go I's dotted, T's crossed, but I do have one factory in China that we operate on a handshake, and I've had that relationship for about six years, and they don't know how to do international business. It's just not possible. Do you ship them cash first? Do they get the letters of credit in hand before they ship anything to you? I've often delivered cash. Ah. Did you do that early on, and that's how the establishment, I mean, that's how the relationship was established. So they know they can trust you. You came with cash, mm -hmm. you took the stuff. So now, at this distance, you're still okay. Yeah, and a lot of Asian partners, once you've established that relationship, it's for life, it's forever. It's, they're not going to do anything to cheat you. It's, it's solid. Are they saying that we know you and you will not change? Right. They don't have friendships that come and go. They're for life, just like their marriages are for life. Margaret explains how their products are environmentally friendly. Um, all of our fleece is made from recycled plastic soda bottles, mm -hmm. and they cut it into shards. And then from there, it, it goes into almost a fiberglass looking type material. From there, it's spun actually into the fleece. Okay. And we used to just buy our fabric from wherever we could get it, but once we found out that recycled recycled fabric was available, mm -hmm. we had no choice but to use it. Is it more expensive? It is. It's about $1.50 more a yard, but with our commitment to being a green company, we felt that it was our moral imperative to use this fabric. Mm -hmm. For fun, Margaret and Jagged Edge staff climb at the Uray Ice Park they help to build. Think the rope will make it? Sure. Right now I'm putting my hands in the leash. That keeps me attached to the, to the axe, which keeps me attached to the ice. It's tenacity. In fact, the reason, one of the reasons this business made it is because we didn't have the luxury of being able to stop. Going out of business will never be an option. We don't have anything to fall back on. How was it? That was great. It was so much fun. If someone came to you today mm -hmm. and said, I want to start a business, I've got my idea, I've fallen in love with this concept, mm -hmm. what, would I, what should I do? What would you tell them? I would tell them, make sure you really love it. Make sure you really want it. Because whatever you decide to do, it is going to test you to no end. And if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to go out of business because you'll just lose your passion for it. Do you think that most people don't understand how hard it is? I don't think they understand how hard it is. It, it's, it has days when it's 14 and 16 hours a day, day after day. It's a tough okay. climb. Okay, Hattie, we're gonna put you in one of these. Okay, now where am I gonna put my second foot? Put your hand right here. Ah, oh, that's much better. Whoops. Okay. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Eek, eek. I know I don't look like Brad. Yeah, you look really good, especially oh, in that vest. You are so good at encouraging people. Okay, right. hey, Hattie, you're going to need to push over to your left. Okay. So stand up on your left foot. There oh, stand up on my left. Very nice. Whoa. Hold above you. Take one. Well, I'm flying! <laughs> Crash. I have a crashed ending. <laughs> well, I didn't die. <laughs> what are the ups and what are the downs of being sisters, being twins, being partners, living, breathing, eating, sleeping, everything together? 
I, th I think the upside is that we are incredibly driven and we share that and together we can move mountains. Some of the it's things that Margaret's quite strong at, um, I'm not so strong. Some of the things I'm very strong at, maybe she isn't, but if you put us together, you get the whole egg since we shared an egg. We hope you make us part of your weekly journey. And also, visit us at smallbusinessschool.org. Experience our entire library and streaming video, read transcripts, and work through study guides. Willa Cather, one of my favorite authors, said, the end is nothing, the road is all. See you next week. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, built just for you, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM and the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. We're where you live your life. We're where you run your business. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.